Come on, 15 seconds. Come on, 15 seconds. Where is it at? Oh, it's not there. It's not there. Hold on, guys. Oh, it is there. It is there. It is there. All right, guys. Sprawls and spins. All right, let's go. You guys are just joining us and watching us. This is a grapple fit grappling class with dummies. So these guys are working out on the dummy. I myself have a little strain in the lower back area, so I am not participating. But I'm here and I am helping these guys out. So they're doing a move called the sprawl right now. And maybe getting a little creative with their movements after they sprawl. So maybe they're doing like a sprawl, maybe a little uh, spin like uh, to lay there at the bottom. They've also been doing this workout now for, uh, well, seven weeks. 20 seconds, you guys. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time. All right. Hey, not bad. That's always a good one to start with. Hey, if you guys are watching this for the first time, if you look on the menu at the top left, you'll see that uh, we're in week six, workout number 19. That 80-45 means that we're, we're on for 80 seconds and we're resting for 45 seconds. That means that we're resting for less time than we're working. And the ratio is 1.8. That's pretty high. You can't just come in here new and do something like that without being really tired. Next up, Toriando's. I want to say uh, the record is like 129 or 130 or something like that. I have to go back to the videos. But to lay it down there at the bottom, she looks like she's on like uh, 80, 90 pace, maybe more. We'll find out at the end if she's counting. You guys notice how it's shuffle, shuffle, boom, shuffle, shuffle, boom, shuffle, shuffle, boom. And that she's like keeping her head up, she's keeping her posture up, and she's trying to like go down and touch the chest of that dummy. That's good. Staying disciplined and keeping the posture. Eric is doing a little variation where he's getting around and he's putting that knee on the belly, and that's fine too. As with all my classes, when I start counting down from 10, whether it's hit, whether it's kids, whether it's this, they go into boost mode. Here we go, guys. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, the moment of truth. Talia, did you count? 85. 85. Hey, that's good. Let that be a challenge to anybody who comes in trying to do that. How you feeling, Eric? Good, though. My wife's cooking bacon and it smells amazing. It's <laughs> you know, I know that feeling when you're working out and you smell food. All right, next up, we're doing knee cut pass, and then we're transitioning to a mount from wherever you end up. So if you go, you go knee cut pass into maybe some kind of side control, and you're going to pop up. Maybe you can, like, hit switch. These guys have been doing this for a little while, so we have lots of ways that we go to mount from side control. So I told them today, get a little creative. We're going to start stringing our moves together. But really, up to this point, we've been really busting out single moves, single techniques, like knee cut pass, just like crazy, just like knee cut, knee cut, knee cut, knee cut, knee cut. 
you know, doing without thinking. I wish I could increase their the size of their screens a little bit for you guys to see, but with the screen share, that's one of the limitations of our technology. Lots of ways to go from side control to mount. Lots of little ways to do that. We talk about that in class. Usually if I'm not hurt, I'll demonstrate, talk about new moves, details, things like that before we start. Here we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time. And if you guys are watching this, and you don't know, but Governor Hogan announced uh, gyms opening up next Friday, 50% capacity. You know, we've been really uh, working hard and preparing and getting ready for, for a condition like that. We're going to keep doing our online classes. We're going to keep doing outdoor classes, but we're going to start doing some uh, experimenting on indoor classes. We'll have more news about that soon. But next up, back step pass, neon belly, and... You can string anything you want. You can even go knee cut. You can even go back step pass to side control. So popping up neon belly. You guys remember the neon belly windshield wipers? You can even pop up neon belly and get a mount. Good, Eric. Good windshield wiper. Get just get creative. So the back step pass is what really triggers all this. You guys might be watching and saying, gosh, well, they're doing a back step pass from uh, a north-south position. And you know what? That's fine. And that works. And that happens. Uh, but if you're doing dummy training, especially with a 120-pound uh, uh, combat sports uh, dummy like what we use, the legs are straight and flat. So there is no presentation of legs. So what we do is we uh, use our imagination and we pretend like the arms that are sticking up on our dummies are the opponent's legs. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. job you guys next up x pass knee cut back step combination the idea is like your right foot is just basically in the dummy's half guard and you guys are going to each and every position that's possible with that condition be careful if you have shoes you don't want to twist your knee or your ankles maybe take your uh your shoes off for this one and use your imagination X pass, knee cut, back step. And then you can just, you can either like reset from there or even from that back step, just go back to like a, like jump on a mount. You guys can even do that. You can do like an X pass, knee cut that fails. You can do like a failed knee cut and just end up in like a side control with uh, your foot in like a, like a uh, captured position, sort of like uh, sometimes what we call like the quarter, um, the quarter mount, or 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 really the half mount. We I even went as far as tying my ankles up to the dummy and like simulating my leg getting kind of trapped. I'll do a video on that one day. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time.
Are you guys focusing primarily on one leg or are you kind of mixing it up? Both legs. You know, I mean, it's up to you guys, right? I've, I always advocate developing skill on one side and getting really good at one side and then going back and doing the other side. Like let, let all that time and all that skill and all that effort help you teach your other side, you know? Or since we do two rounds of training here, you can do your right leg and then the second time through you do your left leg. All right, around the world, putting arm bars. I wanna see peppered arm bars all in there. Americanas, Juju Katamis. You guys, if you watched Lee at the bottom there, she was setting up an arm bar. And she was like, oh, she's transitioned to the other side. Was like, Woo. You know, it's really surprising how much you can do with a dummy. Especially if you have like three months to just focus on it. What's that? Are you talking about me? Every time I talk about dummies, my wife, she always looks at me. Yeah, you just never know how much you can do with a dummy. That's like the theme of our marriage. Theme of our marriage. How much you could do with a dummy? You're pretty surprised, aren't you? Every day. Every day. That's, you know, that's a compliment. I'm a good dummy. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time. I don't know if you could hear my wife snorting. Guys. She's still snorting. It's adorable. She's like, did you say you're surprised what you can do with a dummy? <laughs> She's still laughing. You want a salad? Sure. Deadlifts. Last, last class, before I hurt my back, I was actually doing some, like, controlled jumps. I'd grab the... the, the belt behind the neck and I would do some control jumps but I would say uh, be extremely cautious and careful if you're going to do something like that Danielle is still laughing you guys I know I'm the brunt of the joke too It's all right. I don't mind being the dummy. Sorry, I can't stop. These deadlifts too, they add up. Kiki, what you do upstairs? You know, I've never I've never done like thirty deadlifts before. I've always done like eight. 12 or 5 to 12. I do smell poo. You do? I do. Oh, man. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time. Form, you guys. Those things add up, don't they? You know, for like the first 10, 15, 20 seconds, it's like, eh. You know, but the last 30, it's like, oh, my gosh. Bent over rows. I've been doing like uh, 12 per arm. I haven't really moved on from that. And, and when I do that, there's like 20 seconds left for me. And I'm like, okay, that's it, whatever. I don't know what you guys are doing, but uh, pick something challenging and – if you get about 12, that's probably good. Good enough. 12 per arm. You don't need to be doing anything more than that. Look at Eric. I'm like, 
Eric, you sure that's a 120 pound dummy you got there? <laughs> I just, I just, if anybody at home has a 120 pound dummy, and I know some of you do, like Sierra, although she's on vacation, should be with us right now. She wasn't. Uh, Vadim, he has a gee or a dummy. William, you got a dummy out there. Danielle's like, yep, yeah, I got a dummy. <laughs> But Eric makes that thing look lighter than it is. That thing is heavy. I never noticed the version that you do, Eric. That's that's pretty good. Just make sure you don't hurt your back. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. I love the aspect of the dummy. A lot of people don't realize that if you tie belts on the dummy in very strategic places, that it gives you grips. And gives you the capability to do some really interesting um, weightlifting exercises. And not only that, simulate grips like collar grips um, and, uh, uh, you know, lapel grips. Kneeling presses. That's one's fun. This simulates to me plyometric push ups. The other day, I felt like I was I could take that dummy and just throw it over. I felt myself getting stronger and more powerful with this. It took me 12 weeks, but in the hit, the advanced hit class, I'm doing 16 plyometric push-ups in 45 seconds. Actually, no, I did 20. I did 20. My second set, I did uh, 16. No, on my feet. And then on my third set and fourth set, no, third set, I did like maybe 16. Yeah, but when I first started eight or uh, 12 weeks ago, I was doing plyometric push ups on my knees. And uh, that was challenging. 20 seconds, you guys. Come on, Eric. I know what happened to you. I saw that. That happens to all of us. The dummy gets thrown to the side and it off balances us. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Those things add up too, don't they, guys? I thought that if there's ever a day where we can get a little closer and work with partners and do stuff like that, that I could throw my dummy over to my partner and they could catch it and then push it and throw it on over to me. And I got to catch it. I throw it back to you. And we kind of like play tennis a little bit with the dummy like that. I, that would be fun. You remember when we first started doing this and we put the arms Actually, hold on. We got uh, one arm grips. One arm grips. Those extra three seconds are going to matter. Wow, Talia. You got it gripped in the middle. I didn't realize you stood on the side of it either. I usually straddle it. But uh, hey, I know that sucker's heavy. When you grab it in the middle like that, that's about the heaviest spot you can grab it. Come on, you guys. You guys got it. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, switch arms. Good for you, Talia. You didn't let it drop. That takes a little extra effort. 
to do what you just did? People at home might be like just chiming in thinking, what the heck are these guys doing? <laughs> Let me tell you, they're suffering. They're holding up, up a 120 pound dummy with one hand using the jujitsu belt, which isn't a whole lot to grab. And they're doing 48 seconds, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. Good job, you guys. How did 48 seconds feel? Felt better than 80 seconds. Yeah, I want to get that to uh, 60 seconds where it's no big deal. All right, we're at the top of the list. That's what the yellow screen means. And that weird sound you heard before, that, 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 that just means get ready for the other arm. That's all that meant. Well, I don't that know. That was a crashing car. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle said, I thought we were being attacked. <laughs> Sprawls and spins. You like my uh, my chair position here? That's how I got to do it. Keep my back. And now, gone twelve weeks without any injuries. Nothing hurting. Nothing. Per Feeling perfect, feeling good, feeling on top of the world. And a little strain in my back. That's why I'm taking off this round of sprawls. Stretch my back. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Hey, Danielle, can you grab me a charger, a phone charger? one that works with my computer. Actually, it doesn't matter. Whatever you've got. Thank you. All right, that'll work. Next up, Toriandos. Three, two, one. All right, let's go. Ten seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, you guys.
Oh, can I have a sec? Well, uh, I already made one. It's on the counter. All right. You better quit cleaning up all that crap. Here. Looks like the weather's getting better outside. All right, what do we got? 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. I just realized the title of this exercise is the key cut. The key cuts. I think uh, last workout, I skinned my knees a little bit doing these because I was letting those knee cuts kind of touch the floor. So uh, wearing long pants is advisable. I also realized a little bad habit is not like lowering your forearm and your elbow down into the hip area prior to the knee cut. It's easy just to kind of place your palm on the hip and just sort of knee cut. and That can be a little problem. Ah. You guys know what I mean by that? Like if you're going to do your knee cut with your foot inside the crotch of the dummy, that you need to like get this hand here and get that elbow down. Get that elbow down into the hip of the dummy instead of just being comfortable and just staying like this and just going like this with your knee. Because if you don't take that space up, they can, they can fill, they can put their knee shield in there. All right, well, you know what? You got, uh, Five seconds, <laughs> four, three, two, one. And we got back step pass to anything you guys want. Back step pass to whatever you guys want. All right. Well, here in Columbia, it looks like the sun is out. I was a little worried. I told my kickboxers, <clears throat> bring your raincoats and galoshes. <laughs> galoshes. I love that back step pass. I mean, seven weeks in, for me, that thing has gotten fast. I feel like if I'm ever out on a dance floor, I'm going to bust that move. Next, next wedding I go to, oh, yeah. I'm going to get on the floor, do a little backstepping. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Well, that's why they're a combo. All you're doing is switching the angle of your hip relative to the, uh, to the dummy. That makes a lot of sense. When you're younger, you get to go to, you know, I mean, dancing, you get, you know, if you go to a club, you can dance or go to a party, you can dance. When you get older, it's only weddings and opportunities like that. <laughs> You know, you look at your significant other like, hi, would you like to dance? So I got to use, we're going to use that back step somewhere. All right, next up. X pass, knee cut, back step combinations. I'm really liking this. This is something I can't wait to really just get on the floor and have a technical discussion about. I 
like so many little subtleties and little things that if you learn them make you a very dangerous guard passer because people love to just either attack with half guard or save themselves with half guard or it just ends up half guard in a scramble and if you're the person on top uh this position these positions these techniques and these combinations are something you're going to want to have in your game 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 two one time there was a time that i uh really put a lot of effort and energy into knee cut passing i just did a whole lot of knee cut passing and um you know i was looking at hamo barrera's videos i was looking at uh, uh, uh rafael lovato jr's videos i was just just looking at a lot of knee cut passing and i was making that work for me and what I learned is that, yeah, you can just impose your will, but you need to also know how to change it up. You need to know how to go to different directions, try different things. So that last combo that we did is great for that kind of thing. So around the world, guys, and pepper some arm bars in there, whatever you're doing. Nice, Talia. We need to do more of that, too, where we just throw that under the shoulder complex and just go for it. Like a little Toriando, and then you just kind of jump into that arm bar. You beating that dummy up, Eric? <laughs> hey, I don't blame you, too. It's kind of fun getting to give him a couple punches in the face. Yeah, sometimes you can get really hung up too much into like jujitsu as a sport, which is fine. I mean, if you're an athlete, you're a sport, you're competing, and that's your that's your thing, that's your thing. But you know, don't forget about a good old punch to the face every now and then. Because uh, you know what? We're we're all potential victims to violence in the street. And uh, here we go, 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. You know, like uh, if you talk to the old time Gracies, like the Hicks and Gracies, and you just, you know, the, 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 the nuclear family of the Gracies, uh, you're always going to hear them mention self-defense in conversation. You know, what they try to do is they try to say, hey, whatever you're doing, don't ever lose sight of the importance. And there are some people that are like, yeah, 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 but you know what? I'm just going to do my IBJJF, and that's what I want. That's all I want. But you know what? They do have a point. And, and, I, and I'll talk a little bit about that next round. So next up, you've got deadlifts. Maybe I'll talk it while you guys are doing your deadlifts. But um, it's know, actually why I got into MMA because it was better for uh, self defense. Yeah, we're, we're, nobody is immune to violence. You know, nobody can, can just say confidently that nobody's going to like take advantage of them or try to like rob them or or or, or assault them in some capacity. And if you're an athlete, especially if you're like a competitor and you're in a sport like jujitsu or even MMA or you know any martial art for that matter has an aspect of sport, judo example, like it doesn't take much to incorporate some fundamental self-defense aspects. It doesn't take much at all. And like, I liked what you were doing, Eric. You're just punching the damn thing in the face a couple times. And that was a great example. You know, it's just, it's like, okay, punch it in the face a couple times. 10 seconds. 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. You know, like like a great example of using self-defense or not forgetting about self-defense in any martial art for that matter is just poking somebody in the eyeballs, right? Like, like if somebody's really in your face, you're close enough to do jujitsu. You're doing a mount. You're doing guard. You're doing side control. I mean, poke him in his eyeballs, right? You know, like, but if you don't ever think about it, if you don't ever even like train or practice that in some way, I pose to you that you won't poke that bad guy in the eyeballs. You just won't do it. You know, jab with your fingers extended. Yeah, Bruce Lee said, uh, train the way you fight and fight, and you'll, and you'll fight the way you train. And so, another way of saying that is if, if you expect to react in a certain way to a certain situation, like poking somebody in the eyeballs, for example. If you've never tried it, if you've never thought about it, if you've never like put it into your routine somewhere, somehow, some way, then when the time comes, you will not poke that guy in the eyes. You just won't. It's about your nervous system and, and what you give it, what you present to your nervous system. And if your nervous system doesn't see, try, experiment with a thing, you will not do that thing. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. You know, it's funny who got me into uh, MMA and ultimately jujitsu was Bass Rutten. And I looked him up because I was really insecure and he had these self defense tapes. You know, the ones where he goes bada bing and just like does all these atrocities. Yeah. And with the MMA. I learned how to do eye pokes when I Boss, was 20 years old. Boss Rutten is definitely an example of a guy that doesn't lose sight of that. He, he, he always goes, liver shot, give him a liver shot. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> me. You know, he is no joke. He Five really seconds. Kneeling presses. Yeah, he's a scary guy. Boy, that dummy of yours, Eric, is really bending. Yeah. It's, uh, there's something in the middle where it's creasing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, my dummy is so heavy and stiff it there's no way it would do that unless it you know what unless maybe over time it does i've had this for three years so uh, I've been around for three years all right it's because it's all like rags and t-shirts in there did you stuff it yourself no but i know because it's breaking and uh stuffing's coming out oh uh, my arm's all wacky Three, two, one, time. Hey, Talia, I saw you doing bent over rows instead of pressing. What was that about? I'm messing up the routine today. Normally, I look at the next exercise and do it, but yeah, I messed up that one. I had to switch it. That's all right. As long as you get it in somehow, some way, right? Yeah. No biggie. Hey, so this is the last one, guys, right? One arm press is coming. Last rep. I'm sorry, uh, one arm grips. Yeah, one arm grips. Try to be ready right in the beginning so you get your full 48 seconds in. 
Three, two, one. All right, let's go. Is there any way, Eric, you can extend your back? Uh, yeah, I mean, it just looks god awful painful, Eric. I'm hurting looking at you. I just don't want you hurting your back, man. You know? Yeah. I'm gonna get a different position, man. The ego a little bit. I hear you, man. Just you, you, you got to like find a safe position to lock out yeah. 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 switch man when i'm not working out i, I do a lot of talking <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, but this is, uh, we are streaming to our Facebook group page. And I haven't, I don't think I've streamed there for a while what we're doing. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time. Hey, good job. Let's, uh, let's bring in for that sweaty selfie. You know, sometimes I do something with these pictures and sometimes I don't. Um, you know, I just thought of something I want to show you guys real quick. Uh, I'll show you guys something real quick. <clears throat> See if I have it here. Uh, uh. It was um, Vadim throwing the dummy. Did you guys see that by chance? And I just am not seeing it. I thought I saved it. Uh, did uh, Let me see here. Maybe it's on. Give me a second here. I'm sorry. Uh, so you guys don't know what I'm talking about? You guys don't see uh, Internet Explorer, do you, on my screen? Let's go to... Uh, there we are you guys see that um oh look at that uh i just don't see it i thought i thought i put it in here somewhere but if not, I'll look, I'll look, I'll share it with you guys later. But it was essentially Vadim throwing, oh, I, I have a way I can show you. All right. <laughs> All 
He just keeps going, you guys. I asked him, I was like, Vadim, is that a loop? Are you on a video loop? Or are you really just throwing that thing? I, I, I think he's just throwing that thing, and it's not a loop. Is that a 120-pounder? It is. It's, the, it's, the, it's a 120-pounder, and it's the same one that uh, you guys have because he bought it from me. So I, I know, okay? That's pretty impressive. Isn't that pretty impressive? I, I think maybe, Eric, I might put it in there for you, okay? Uh, and the ladies, you can try. But um, that thing is uh, it's pretty damn heavy. You know what I mean? How about uh, give it a try on your own time, Talia? And, and, and let me know. You know, you could message me. You could say, hey, Gary, you know what? Like, I got it. I'm ready. And, and if you message me and you tell me, I'll put it into the routine. But uh, that is pretty strenuous right there. Okay? That thing is no joke. You know how heavy it is. You know how heavy it is just to lift that thing up. Right? But uh, I would hope that uh, one day if we have grapple fit in the school, we actually have like an official grapple fit in the school, which I'd like to have. I'd like to have like an official class, right, where we have the space to do something like that or a variation of it, you know? You know, the, uh, you know I, I'm obsessed with like pickup throws, like, you know, suplexes and tegarumas. You know, the whole trick behind that is you go perpendicular, attach your hips to their hips, do a squat and pop your hips and look uh, up and behind. And that's all you do to get – and I've taught – I've taught – 12 year olds how to, to uh to pick me up and, and uh body slam me using that so that actually could be a good thing with the with the dummies if we pick them up and like uh like uh this right look how easy he picks that thing up yeah you gotta get it you suck it in and then you just, all you gotta do is squat and pop and then eventually and that's how you do uh, a lot of these pickup throws so, Eric, if you can put together a kind of clean-looking, easy-to-follow video that teaches that, I'll put it up in the portal. I'll put it up right. in the portal as an instructional video for grapple, grapple fit. Okay? Because I tell you, this is a lot easier to do than uh, – because in judo, you really can't do this kind of stuff well because uh, it's a nasty yeah. fall, and, and it's just not really nice to do your training partners. So. Yeah. And exactly. Talia, Talia, same thing. If you've got some like really cool ideas on like a move, a combo, or something, um, you know that members portal. There's a lot we can do with that. We I could make like a section where um, check out what our members are doing, or um, there, there's no limit to the creativity that we can put into that portal. And you guys know about the portal, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, give that some thought too, Eric, you know, if you can put, a, uh, put something together, man, I'll put it in there. So, uh, thanks for, uh, being here guys. And thanks for listening to my, my, the rants of a dummy. <laughs> my wife, when she's really laughing, she snorts. If you ever meet her and she's laughing at your jokes, it's not that funny unless you snort. Okay. So make sure you get her snorting. And I'll see you guys uh, soon. And Eric, give some thought to Saturdays, uh, uh, the eleven thirty hour. I think we have space, and um, we're really spreading people out. Like you get your own mat, you get your own area, you get your own dummy. We we clean them, sanitize them. Uh, um, we can wear masks, uh, whatever you want. We don't make you wear a mask when you're on your own dummy and you're on your own little area, like spread out. But um, uh, you'll see me wearing a mask. I wear a mask 24-7. Junior, and Christina, they should be wearing a mask. And if they're not, I'll make sure they are. But um, just give it some thought if you have any concerns. And, and also kettlebells. Uh, I'm definitely going to make the kettlebells because that's early enough that the heat shouldn't uh, mess me up too bad. Okay. Um, and, and I could, uh, and that actually, you know, could probably work though. Uh, I do want to, I can't wait to get back to the gym. You know, yeah. it's my second home. Hey, Talig, also give that some thought too. 9 a.m. kettlebells. You know, um, I, have to, I have to purchase some kettlebells. 
Well, uh, the 9 a.m. kettlebells is uh, actually a class at the school. It's a class at the school. We've already had one. So this Saturday, we're going to have our second. And Danielle had two participants. Uh, you probably know them, uh, but uh, they're two ladies. And um, uh, we, we we go to the membership portal or go to the website and schedule it. Just click the kettlebell link and schedule it to reserve the spot, all right? But uh, you'll see me there. I'll be there. If I'm healthy, I'm going to be doing the class with you. If not, I'll be probably sweeping up trash <laughs> or cleaning a bathroom or something, you know? But uh, hey, thanks, guys. Thank you. I'll see you now. Bye-bye. Take care.